the brand has been growing rapidly, I have to imagine. Um, what has what have been some of the challenges with that growth, right? So I would imagine, again, going back to your past, you're typically going into an existing brand, right? Yes. You tick up the growth rate from 10 to 30% or whatever, right? But this is like from zero to $20 million in revenue, right? Or whatever the number is. And so what's that been like? How has that experience been? Well, and <laughs> let's do it in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's exactly. do it from let's... your kitchen table. How about that? <laughs> Man. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that one. Like, and then, yeah. and then let's have your whole launch plan go right out the window. The like everything that planning. you traditionally <laughs> right. So it's, whatever you traditionally know works. Like, do a big <laughs> launch event. You're not gonna do it. You you can't. Well, or and like again, a shoot. you guys have had I think either the most successful or second most successful launch we've ever tracked behind Fenty. Oh so. There you go. At least from an EMB perspective, right? Knock so, on wood. yeah. What's Thank you. that? Thanks. What's that been like? What have been some of the challenges? It's a hard every every challenge, every challenge, yeah. and and hopefully every challenge we've overcome. I'm so proud and, and feel so gra such gratitude for the team, my peers, my colleagues, my my team, because it, it was hard and there was no playbook and and it's so how do where do I even begin? I mean everything from content. Like we have to create, you think about what a brand, what's required of a brand to launch a website, to launch a brand <laughs> on Sephora, to launch a gondola. First and foremost, it's a lot of content. You need video, you know, you need a hero image. You need all, so, and then it was 150 SKUs. So yes, you, so it's not just like launching, you know, once you've launched a brand, it's usually like quarterly launches. And maybe with each of those quarterly launches, there's uh, just a handful of products. But this was like, we're going to launch everything, you know, and a brand. And you're not going to have any of the traditional tools that you have to do it. So <laughs> You literally can't do photo shoots. So enjoy that. <laughs> no. So thankfully, we, we did have one massive photo shoot in January before, you know, the world went into quarantine. And with that, we were able to get a, a, a ton, thankfully, and just really sort of sweat those assets. Uh but then the world went into quarantine. We still, I think I had about five shoots scheduled from March to May of stuff that Sephora needed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the, I mean, my goodness, they laughed to this day because they were like, Katie, what are we going to do? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to get back to you on that, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> we're going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out because we can, everything, we can figure it all out. I just don't have the answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> On this particular call? There were, there were a lot of cals like that. <laughs> and so I have to, on this public forum, I will say thank you to the Sephora team for trusting me. Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't I mean, know. they had a lot to figure because out we too, we couldn't sure. get, like, I could not have Selena or models like or photographer. Like, you just couldn't do it. There yeah, wasn't a bill. Yeah, it wasn't possible. Yeah. So we did, so Selena did a lot of tutorial videos, a lot of, um, beauty advisor training, everything from her bedroom. And you will, you could see, we have some really great YouTube. These were assets that we used in digital marketing on our Sephora P page, on our homepage or on our, on our website rather. And, it, and you might've gotten more of her time this way than yeah. you would have otherwise. It might've worked out well from that perspective. Cause she's stuck in her house and like, <laughs> you know, what else is she going to do? Um, she, what was cool was how, I mean, part of the, the makeup, part of the, the, the sort of ethos behind the brand is makeup made to feel good in without hiding what makes you unique. And the products are all very are lightweight and easy to use. And when you see Selena doing it, like there were no professional photographers, no professional lighting, no makeup artists, like that's as real as it gets. So that was pretty cool. I, I will admit, I hate to say anything as a silver lining with COVID because it really well, hasn't of course, been. Of course, of course, of course. But of course, yeah. it was... Um, you know, that was an interesting outcome. And then the other thing that was tough is that when you launch a foundation and concealer, 48 shades of foundation and concealer, it, it, it's best practice. It's recommended that you have 48 individuals wearing the product so that when you are on the website, the e-commerce site, you can help find your shade. Because there's just it's so tough to find your foundation shade on a, on a website, on .com. So how can we eliminate the barriers as best as possible? So I got so many questions. When are you, how are you going to, and I was like, 40, how do I get 48 people? In a, like, how I do I do this? That I can't meet in person. That, that I, I can't, can't like, yeah. So we, I like to call it the Herculean effort. We, um, 
we found 48 individuals back and forth, casted, and we sent them all a primer, a foundation, a concealer, and a ring light. And mm. they each of the people had to have an iPhone X or whatever the latest iPhone was, simply because we needed to have like, that was the quality because they were doing yep. it themselves and just to have the consistency of quality. And the, they give, we give a little bit of art direction, like stand against a white wall and smile. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had to do and, the same thing with the podcast. I tried recording yeah. one outside and I was like, it was like our second one with the Dermalogica CEO, Relly. Yeah. And my, my computer yeah. overheated because it was 95 degrees outside. And like, oh, I man. ended up, the second half of the recording, I had to put ice packs under the laptop in order to like finish the recording. Cause it, and then on top of that, we lost the whole first half of the recording. And so, like, it was, anyway, so yes, keep going. Yeah, so similar content, feelings. Content in the time of COVID. Uh, so, so, but then it worked out. So we have, you know, we have forty-eight images of people wearing our foundations and and primer and concealer, and it that was truly it. No makeup artist, no le professional lighting, no professional photographers, and that I kind of loved as well because it really showed the authenticity of the product and how easy it was to use. And so we've maintained some of the virtual. And I think what's in interesting coming out of this it, what what the pandemic did is that it forced us to reimagine how we create content for a brand and how we how we execute so much of our creative and we i mean we're still you know we're still not fully back so we from there we launched more products we had to do more of these virtual shoots so we kind of got the virtual shoot thing down um yeah but but it's hard it's what's hard is yeah that you know you're building everything you're kind of building the plane while it's in the air so you're you're building processes, you're, um, everyone's wearing a different hat. There's no roles and responsibilities are mixed and blurred. Um, and all you can do is just hold, sort of hold hands and be kind to one another and go for it. And, but at the end of the day, I think the most important thing was to ground everyone in your brand values and mission and vision, because you're all moving so quickly that if you're not grounded in that, you, you could run the risk of sort of diluting the brand or doing sort of the quote unquote wrong thing.